And now for today's show and tell. Even as a boy, Steve had big ideas. Stevie win. My subject is the golden nugget. And, as we shall see, as he got older, his ideas got bigger and bolder. In 1963, Steve married Miss Miami Beach Elaine Pasco, graduated from the University of Pennsylvania, and took over the operation of his family's bingo business. Steve had had a taste of Las Vegas on trips with his dad, and the experiences left an indelible impression on the young Steve. So in 1967, Steve and Elaine moved to Las Vegas and began his gaming career as a part owner and slot manager of the Frontier Hotel. And in under five years after arriving in Las Vegas with the help of community leaders such as Perry Thomas and Howard Hughes, Steve was able to buy a controlling interest in a dusty downtown gambling hall called the Golden Nugget. Steve renovated and expanded the Golden Nugget, transforming it into a four-diamond resort known for its elegance, entertainment, and personal service, and in the process, dramatically increased their profits. Not content to rest on his laurels, Steve's ideas just kept getting bigger. He used Golden Nugget profits to buy a older hotel in Atlantic City, which he demolished and built the Golden Nugget Hotel and Casino on the boardwalk. It became world-renowned for its luxurious accommodation, superstar entertainment, and memorable TV advertisements. It's really a fabulous hotel, but the kid needs a lot more work. <laughs> the kid needs a lot more work? Still, this wasn't enough. He wanted to build something on the Las Vegas Strip that had never been done before. In 1986, after selling the Golden Nuggets Atlantic City property, he invested part of the profits into a new resort at a prime strip location, and the Mirage was born. The Mirage featured an indoor forest, an outdoor volcano, dolphin and tiger habitat, and an entertainment mega production of Siegfried and Roy. The Mirage was considered a risky venture by the standards then prevailing in Las Vegas, but it proved to be enormously successful making the Fortune magazine's list of America's most admired companies. It ignited a $12 billion building boom, catapulting Las Vegas into the fastest growing city in America and the number one tourist destination in the country. The era of the mega resort had begun. Wynn followed the Mirage with a new themed resort called Treasure Island, which featured a mock sea battle between renegade pirates and a British man of war. He built a custom theater for the first ever permanent Cirque du Soleil show in Las Vegas called Mystere. Steve expanded further on his concept of the luxury casino in the Bellagio Resort, including an artificial lake with fountains that shoot 500 feet in the air. The Bellagio is credited with starting a new spree of luxurious developments in Las Vegas. Steve also oversaw the development of a new resort in Biloxi, Mississippi. Beau Rivage opened in March of 1999 and brought the wind standard of excellence to that beautiful historic region. In June 2000, the MGM purchased Mirage Resorts. Steve stepped down as chairman and very soon afterwards purchased the historic Desert Inn for Elaine on her birthday and promptly began the design and development of his grandest vision, Wynn Las Vegas. I'm Steve Wynn and this is my new hotel, the only one I've ever signed my name to. Once again, Steve broke the mold. He designed this hotel from the inside looking out with the thought that there is no franchise in a tourist attraction only in a guest. In 2002, the Chinese government made three 20-year concessions available in its special province, Macau, hoping to increase international tourism and foreign investment. And Wynn Resorts was awarded one of the licenses. Wynn broke ground for Wynn Macau in June 2004 and began exporting his vision of Las Vegas to the other side of the world. The resort opened its doors in September of 2006, and the response was overwhelming. While the 600-room Wynn Macau is less than a quarter the size of Wynn Las Vegas, it has redefined the standard for quality and exceptional service in this former Portuguese colony. Wynn is taking the Chinese where they've never been before. Meanwhile, back in Las Vegas, Steve's latest project, Encore, broke ground in April 2006. 
Encore will complement Win Las Vegas and give its guests even greater variety. Encore is scheduled to open towards the end of 2008, adding yet another piece to the mosaic that Steve has created.